it is hard to walk away from what we saw on Saturday and not be extremely excited about what's going on in Chicago. Justin Fields, we know he's been good. Can he do it all by himself? No, he doesn't have to. I've been talking about DJ Moore and banging the table for this guy since nobody was talking about him or giving him any love. And look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh, he's running into the end zone. His first touch as a bear, his first, mm, his first little morsel, his first little nibble as a crumb went for a beautiful 62 yard score. If he had a quarterback, some consistency, he could get this done on every play, every time he touches the ball, and he might. He's a game changer for this passing game. This is a perennial 1,000-yard receiver with whoever's throwing in the ball. And while he was primarily used as a deep option, a threat last year, in that way, 11.2 yards uh, a catch. That was, by the way, top five in the National Football League. He has shown this ability to make things happen after the catch, also throughout his young career, unheralded just as he is. This is a nice little reminder of what he can do when he puts the ball in his hands and gets the ball in his hands from a guy like Justin Fields. And then, <laughs> Fields' next pass is screen. That, I mean, it nearly went awry, but it ended up in the hands of Khalil Herbert. We love Herberts in the NFL. Woo-hoo-hoo. 56-yard -hoo. score. Incredible effort slicing his way through defenders to find the end zone. This is preseason week one. Okay. But Herbert, this is not just this little moment that he's had, right? He has shined over the past two years while filling in for David Montgomery. He's averaged an absurd 5.7 yards per carry last year. I think people are still sleeping on what he could potentially bring to the table, and he will have a chance to be... I would imagine a primary option. I know everybody still thinks Foreman is going to happen, and he should. They should use everything that they have and zig and zag accordingly. Uh, but he's going to be, could be, a monster in this backfield this year. So why is this a big deal? Should we be saying, who cares? We'll see. This isn't anything. Uh, why is it so exciting that Fields throws a few short passes that turn into big scores? Well, I listened and tuned into Chicago local radio, and I, I did hear this stat, and I said, this can't be true. Could this be true? And it is. The Bears ranked dead last in the NFL a season ago when it came to yards after the catch. That's dreadful. The entire passing game was so dependent on Justin Fields having to hit big plays downfield or making it all happen on his legs with that offensive line. It's just hard to do, and they didn't have anywhere near the talent that he needed around him to get anything done. So he still throws a good deep ball, but for this offense to be a success, to make waves in what they could in an NFC North that nobody knows what's going on, it's a weebly-wobbly, you need guys who can turn short completions into big plays. And if you want evidence of why that matters, if you look at that list, guys, the Kansas City Chiefs were number one in yak yards last season. They're nowhere near at the bottom like we just saw. Number one on that list. And, I mean, in fact, Mahomes, he had more yak from his receivers than any quarterback in the league since he became a starter in 2018. So I don't want to get caught up in too much of the, the hype of, you know, nine snaps and three preseason passes, but I'm genuinely excited about what's happening in Chicago. And somehow somehow people in Chicago still have a way of saying, like, screen passes and short game. Mahomes, that's how they win the Super Bowl, with the yak. We want the yak. Don't we understand? The yak is a good thing. And when you look at these... Uh, by the way, when I was saying weebly wobbly, that's just my way of pulling up the FanDuel sportsbook uh, looks right here as far as, the, far as the odds for this division. I got to say, this is sort of wild to me to see the Bears below the Packers, okay? They have the longest odds to win the division. Okay, I'll take this. I'm taking this all day. Uh, I like Chicago at plus 430, okay? And those don't jump on the bandwagon now, Bears fans. Guess what? I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do what I want, and I'm picking them. I'm picking them right now, or at least at those odds. Them being the biggest long shots, a bit disrespectful. Somebody has to be at the bottom, I guess. I actually like that they're at the bottom, and we're going to be scrutinizing and getting excited. Uh, Bears fans, I know you don't want to hear from me, but if these Bears are making things happen, and they made the right moves, and I was excited about it last year, they're on their way. Be on your way. Don't celebrate a Super Bowl win after you beat the 49ers week one last year. That was going on, and I did, I'm did. i sitting at a sports bar, and all everyone's freaking out like you guys won the Super Bowl after week one. It did not happen. You could be so much better this year, and of course I'm here for it. Give me a break.